Hey, 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 everybody. How you guys doing out there? Oh, wait, there I am. Hey, guys, what's going on? Uh, welcome to Table Talk. It's been a little while, and um, could you get the door there, man? I so, certainly can. Yeah, yeah, it, it's been a little while. It's been a little while, but again, Dragon Attack, like everybody has seen, off of, um, off of, um, you know, off of the Instagram and all that jazz. Matter of fact, things went so weird that we should just be coming up on the stream right now. Um, man, it has been. It has truly, truly been. That's what I gotta say. It, it, it has been. But as I can, I can also say that I need to do my phone thing and make sure that it's turned off, or at least you know to quiet mode. So y'all get the attention that you guys deserve. And of course, as always, happy Thursday. And I am Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer. And, oh wait, oh man, so many things. There we go, all right, here we are. And yeah, I'm still, what's the term I'm looking for? Um, I don't wake up in the morning well, what can I say? I really don't. <laughs> it's my fault. I don't fault. wake up well. But that's okay because I'm here with someone who does wake up well, and that is my very good friend, D.W. McCann, the Bard yeah, in the Deck. Yeah, that's your camera right there. Yep. Yeah, I put it all the way over there. And yeah, hey, look at that. Ah, yeah, Bard in the Deck. See, see, it says so on the thing. And yeah, so we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Um, holidays are coming up, which means mm -hmm. people are going to be getting a lot more games. It's time That's for them true. To get games. That's it's true. For them to get most of my uh, wish list is games. Yeah, well, most of mine I is. I wish I had a family that bought them more <laughs> often for me. My oh, wife's I, wonderful about it, but my family kind of looks at gaming like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, see, that's funny. You have a shirt. When you first said that, I was like, you know, "Wait, wait, wait a second! You have a family?" It's like, "Yeah, oh man, so many, so many games are on my Christmas wish list. I just wish I had a family to play with." <laughs> you know. <laughs> So, but yeah, no, I get that. Now, honestly, I don't have many games on my on my list because I'm one of those weird grown ups where it's like, <sighs> I think I might want a game, yeah. And then I go to the game store, I see what's there, and that's it. That's that. That's the whole thing. I uh, have most, a couple, and when I say mo that's mostly the thing, I think I might want the game. I go to the game store, I look at it, and then I decide not really. I don't really need it. I have a couple that I'm I I have collected this so many different iterations Red Dragon in Smash Up, uh, um, uh, the DC deck builder. All of those have so many expansions more than I have. Yeah. So I'm always like, yeah, no, I'll take another expansion to DC deck builder. Yeah. Even if it's not a fun one, man, I'll add it and I'll find some way to to adapt the rules in a way that I like it. You know. Ooh. Yeah, it's funny. I've been doing a lot of um, stuff with the archives and the posts mm -hmm. because there's so many things, so many new announcements. Like the Patreon, the Patreon is up, um, and that actually squeezes a little more pressure. So here's the new way that this goes down. Okay, you ready for this? Are you ready? Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? Listen good. They're listening. Um, yeah. So what we end up doing is we record live, and then um, you know we're doing the broadcast live and all that jazz, and then after the broadcast, I compile everything. Then I upload it to Patreon for our patrons, and then <laughs> I, after that, um, I keep everything going like that. And then a week later, today's episode is going to be up on YouTube next week. So it's thing after thing after thing after thing. Um, but I'm I'm getting a rhythm. I'm getting a rhythm. So that's going to be good. Still working on the archives, but my editing days is going. Oh, what? Yeah. What? You moved me around too much. Uh, I'm not sure if my video card is up to what it used to be. Kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> you can't exactly buy a video card a cane. Hmm? Or a walker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. Um, but, yeah, so it's one of those, do I upgrade the video card? Do I just get another laptop? Do I do it all that stuff? It's Christmas, which means this is the time for begging, but also sales are coming up. Yeah, that's true. So I don't, I don't quite know. We're we're gonna work on that. So, um, yeah. now tell me something. Um, it's been a few weeks since the last time you've been on stream. Yeah, it's so been uh, about a month and a half, maybe two months. Yeah. So what's been going on? Where you been? Oh, all over the place. Uh, I mean, 
I, I made mention last time I was on that I've got a little boy now. Um, so that's been taking up a lot of my time. Ooh, Plus first Christmas. Yep. It's his first Christmas. He doesn't know yet. <laughs> We're thinking it's adorable. We're, you know, loving showing him the Christmas tree. And he's like, ah. <laughs> but it's the same it's face he makes thing. when he looks, <laughs> looks at the refrigerator. You know, it's not exactly the same as it's going to be when he's more um, aware of what's going on. True. Um, but, uh, no, so, but just taking care of him in general has been uh, an experience and getting a lot less sleep and my recording sessions are now paired with feeding sessions since I record usually in the middle of the night when I'm at home. I'm also having to balance that with I'm feeding him either before or after I'm doing the recording session at night, which means sleep needs to be fit in there somewhere. Well, I don't know. I'm seeing a gimmick like, hey, hire me, D.W. McCann, breastfeeding voice actor man. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, it may surprise you, but I'm not personally breastfeeding. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty surprising. I'm just saying, you know, you might have, like, I don't know, this actor has a voice quality that has, well, like, a youth behind it. I a don't know. Lot it's <laughs> almost like I can hear a newborn. That will appeal to the mom market. A I'm lot of people have liked the photo that I took. I put on my Instagram of, of uh, my little boy in my arms uh, yelling at the mic, and I'm yelling at the mic, too, with almost the same facial expression. So <laughs> we've gotten some uh, some good you know times with that. Well, hashtag paternity test, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's that. There's uh, my cartoon launched. Uh, I'm I'm uh, one of the main characters on Beyblade on uh, Disney XD. Okay. So I've been working on that. I've been working on um, different projects. I uh, get myself going now that I'm union. Um, and also just partially launching some new product projects that are going to be coming in uh, 2019, uh, including Kindred Spirits, which I'm working on with my friend Shelby. And we're uh, basically putting together an immersive theatrical experience. So gotcha. there's all the immersive haunts. This is more of an immersive theatrical experience. Okay. So we're, we're uh, working on different angles. And, and uh, he's launching something before that that is a virtual – I mean a uh, audio tour on headsets uh, as you go to the National Gallery in London that is not wrong at each painting, but – well, some of them it's wrong – uh, like uh, for instance, there's a Van Gogh painting where apparently he spends the whole time talking about the frame, not oh, okay. not the painting <laughs> at all, but makes up stuff about the frame. Oh, um, that and, sounds and, uh, yeah. So your friend is being paid to pull people in rooms, like, and if you look to your left of this frame, you will find something rather, uh, you'll find something not very inspiring. Ah, but if you look to your right, you'll find the restroom. You know? <laughs> well, the thing is, is that people will pay him f to be trolled. <laughs> they're they're gonna download the file themselves and ah. they'll they can then play it as they walk the gallery, <laughs> so it's uh, a fun project that he's launching right now, um, and then the next w the next one that'll be after that is our our project Kindred Spirits. Oh man, yeah. So, well, yeah. There's that's a lot. That's a lot. I wish what I've been up to in our absence has been that freaking what's the term productive, cool, awesome, all that other stuff. You know. I'm getting a lot of gaming in too. I mean, I, I, I've uh, made room for the four tabletop games I'm in right now, and oh, and uh, I've been entertaining the idea. Some of my friends do a lot of these camp overnight LARPs, and uh, I don't know that uh, the boy's up for it or my wife's up for you know being alone in charge of the boy for a weekend just so I can go game. Um, so it'll be possibly a little while, but I'm really interested in a lot of those that are going on right now. Okay, well, very cool. Um, I'm pulling up a couple of things real quick. Uh -huh. I'm trying to do that whole like get all the announcements and all that stuff out of the way at the beginning of the, way of the early. show. You know, but there are just so many, so many. I are you pulling up the one I mentioned? No. Is that is that the one you're pulling up first? I wish we don't do that okay. much prep before shows. <laughs> 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 we really don't. No. Um, well, honestly, um, we've got a lot of things, um, a lot of things that are going down. And again, it's the holiday season and all that. So what I was going to do was I was going to tell the people um, that, you know, um, I put out this big announcement on Decker's Iron Book a couple of days ago about the Patreon. Mm -hmm. And I made specific, 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 but I made, I made sure to thank the people that have been all the help to us um, over all this time because there has been a lot of people helping 
again, our video came, like 2018 was a big year for Back in the Day. Um, really big year. Um, and with that, um, there's a few new things. So I wanted to announce that, yes, we got the Patreon up and going. And that is a real thing, and it's really awesome. So we've got three patrons in two days. So that's pretty awesome. Everything is like public and we've got the stuff from a couple of things from last week up there and yeah again I've been um, doing what I can on getting this stuff going showing people so hey become a patron over at patreon.com slash bib underscore p um, you also have the option if you just want to do like direct donations for Christmas to help us up for the team of the year um, to go to um, our GoFundMe, which is still up because we never hit our goal, which is interesting. Um, but, yeah, and that's at GoFundMe.com slash Big P, which is, you know, one of those things. But now that I've got the begging out of the way, if y'all don't like me begging, I understand that. Because we're sitting up online going, let us entertain you, but first fill the hat. Fill the hat. Stop listening to the guitar and walking by. And maybe thinking about throwing a quarter next time because you're a tourist. You're not coming back down that street. I understand. But if y'all don't like me talking about all the begging and all that stuff, well, that's cool because you can always hit us up at backinthedeck at gmail.com. You see what I did there? It was all a segue. <laughs> um, check out the archive on YouTube. Of course, all that's for free. Follow us on Twitter at Back in the Deck. Join the book. Uh, join the Facebook group, Deckers on the Book. That's where we've been doing a lot more announcements, showing people what's going on with the website. And the Deckers, the whole Deck Mob, can talk to each other, say what they're oh, they've painting. Been, they've been sharing new paintings. Oh, yeah. They, they've been doing a miniatures. They've been sharing different games that they're introducing to. It's, it's a good community for people to, to share their love of games yeah, and their and love that of is geek the place, culture. Yeah, and that is the place to troll me if – if that's what they really want to do. <laughs> Not in the chat during the live stream, but troll me on Deckers on the book. I'll I'll fight you there. But if um if you don't have time to like watch us live or if you're driving and you shouldn't be looking at your damn phone, then head over to SoundCloud slash B I B underscore P. Are you sensing a theme? And you can listen to our audio archive. And just for doing that, you can go down there and download every back episode of every single one of our shows for you, for free, forever. Isn't that fun? Um, so, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And follow us on our Instagram because that's when you know when we're um, putting out stuff and all that jazz. So, again, you know, those are the things that we got up and going. Again, I'm just – I'm very proud. I'm very proud of the Patreon we've grown on. And I'm just – oh, yeah, look at that. I'm, it's so weird having a logo and all that stuff. But, yeah, we got a whole lot of those things and all the stuff is hashtagged and all that jazz. I know I sound like a dad, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we got we got them hashtaggers, and it's got the pictures and 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 the other pictures and all that stuff. So yeah, go on and do that thing. And um, yeah, so that's <coughs> that's it for the official announcements and all that jazz. But I got a special segment on today's show that you weren't planning for. Uh oh. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, uh, I'm being that guy. Here. Being that guy. Uh oh. Uh oh is right. Uh oh is right because, um, again, I just recently said the truth of when it is. I mean, today is um December what nineteenth twenty. No, it's the twentieth. Twentieth day before the solstice. God, I'm such a terrible wizard. Such a terrible wizard. Um, so it being the day before the solstice and all that stuff, or a lot of people say Christmas, Christmas. It's Christmas time now. Um. Up. Yeah, isn't that fun? So it's around Christmas time. So if you look to your left, you'll see that I've moved uh, my main camera. And I put yes. it like right here. So I'm like, ah, I can reach to the screen now. But yeah, I really am. Again, we've got so many cameras. I still got to clean this place up. You guys would be embarrassed if you saw the Lens Tower right now. But the Dragon Attack was a thing, and I'm tired. I'm on that delirium. That's what I'm on. <laughs> um, but if you look to your right, you'll see a little cardboard box on the no, on the table just in front of you. A little mm -hmm. cardboard box. Go ahead and uh, open said cardboard box. San Fernando Harbor City. Mm-hmm. San Fernando. Elephant. San Fer yes. All right. All right. Because um, 
for you guys out there, we started the Patreon and the GoFundMe because I don't pay these people to show up, but <laughs> I want to. So, um, just a little bit oh, of wow. appreciation there, you know, show, show the people. You see, we're gamers, and as gamers, we have a whole lot of nickins <laughs> and nackins. This is, this is a uh, nesting doll. Yes, it's, it's a box. It's a, a square box. nesting doll. And I figure, you know, with the new baby. And a box. <laughs> you know, yeah, so with the new baby and. Uh, he's not going to fit in here. No, I know, uh, I'm aware. I'm okay, aware. just want to make aware. sure. No, those are for the wife. Oh, you know. she's not going to fit in here either. No, but see, the big box <laughs> is for how sane she is. The middle box is how sane she's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> and it j you see, they go smaller in size to accommodate stuff. So, yeah, uh, show the people out there. Show, show. It, it's nesting dolls yeah, it's nesting of boxes. Dolls. Yes, they're aluminum nesting dolls. And velvet inside. Yes, aluminum. Um, you can use them for your dice, you know. Or yeah, or miniature. Like, this was perfect for uh, a few miniatures. A friend of mine has a uh, character he's playing right now in a Pathfinder game that he has two miniatures for. Because he he bought one that was clear for when he's being very stealthy. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's very cool. It's like Doctor Strange in the Astral Plane. Yeah, pretty it's, much. You know. Pretty much. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. Oh, and Merry Xmas. You know, Happy ha um, um, Hanukkah Kwanzaa. And a super solstice yeah. and a yeah. fabulous yeah. Festivus for the rest of us. Yeah, yeah. It's one of them things. So that is lovely. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. And again, but that's a split between you and your wife. Okay. You know. Okay. I was originally thinking, hey, I'll look, give her the Bobby plastic. Yeah. She gets the plastic and the cardboard, and I get the metal and the velvet. Yeah. Okay. Um, which, again, very wise, because, <laughs> you know, you never want to give your wife that just had a child something solid to hit you with. <laughs> so, so, yeah. That's all right. I, I, I did score some points for myself last night, and she was having a rough day. And I, I took everything I had to not let her know that I had put up all of Christmas. She was thinking because we didn't manage to get anything up for Halloween. It was uh, too close to the baby. Yeah. We were Thanksgiving. We don't really decorate too much for. And so Christmas was getting later and later. And uh, I spent all day yesterday putting up all of the Christmas stuff that uh, it, other than the actual ornaments on the tree, which okay. we do together. Um, and so she came home frustrated and, and from her day and got to see the house with the Wait, lights on and everything. she's back to work? No, no, she she yesterday. Um, technically, today I was supposed to be radiated, <laughs> and oh. yesterday was another thing. So she spent two days uh, with her mom. Um, I was supposed to get something this morning that was going to make me radioactive and not allowed to be around my baby. Right, uh, right. Certain scan, um, but that got postponed till next week. Oh, okay. So, um, but she had already planned these two days to be at her mom's. Uh, yesterday was working on some stuff for presents for people and. Right. Some of them for me, so I don't get to see them, and that's why they, she goes to my her right. mom's house. So since you weren't getting your gamma rays put in there, you're like, well, I guess I'll decorate the house for the wife. Pretty yeah, much. here you go, here you go. <laughs> Hi, honey, I love you. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, no, that that's man, you're sweet. You really are. Um, see, it's the weird thing. being One, being black and urban. Two, being an occultist. And three, um, the girlfriend being Jewish. Christmas is not really a big thing here at the Wizard's Tower because it's like I've got Kwanzaa on one hand, Hanukkah on the other hand, Solstice on a third hand. It comes with magic. And um, and then there's the whole Christmas thing, and I'm like, you know what? We'll just give people stuff. And, yeah, that that's pretty much Well, that's it, the thing. So. It, this is a, a season for most of the different celebrations involve giving something. Yeah. Like, that's kind of the point of the year. It's not whether or not whatever specific – Thing you celebrate. I mean, I celebrate with several of my Jewish friends. I celebrate with several of my uh, occult friends. I celebrate with several. The, the point is not which holiday do you celebrate, and that's you know I, I happen to be one of those people who happy holidays does not piss me off. Well, you because know, it covers them all. <laughs> well, the truth is, happy holidays always cover it all because most people don't quite get that the holiday season. Well, it starts in Thanksgiving. No, it starts. It starts at Halloween. I don't know. It I've never said happy holidays at Halloween. Um, but it's no. also my favorite holiday, yeah. so I'm very happy to specify that one. Yeah, but I mean. But um, then again, that's also Samhain. Yeah, it, it's um, you got Halloween. Mm -hmm. A month later, you've got um, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. A month later, you've got Christmas. A week later, got New you've Year's. got New Year's. And, and then you and get Hanukkah two was off. a couple weeks ago, yeah, last and, or week. last week. Yeah, last week. And. Uh, I don't know where Kwanzaa falls on the calendar, and um, I know solstice is tomorrow. Kwanzaa starts on Wednesday, day after Christmas. Okay. 
Okay. And then Festivus, I know, while somewhat made up, I still know people that celebrate that and Shatnermas. I have friends that celebrate Shatnermas. For those of you on SoundCloud, I'm staring blankly and blinking. There's a Shatnermas? Uh, there are people who've decided to replace any concept of deity with William Shatner. So uh, their Screw curses. That. If <laughs> I have to have a Mary Shatnermas, then I want a happy Nimoy. Oh, I believe that is the rest of the, the <laughs> greeting. I believe that really is the rest of the greeting. I'll have to check with him. Yeah. Uh, there's a buddy of mine who's no kind of an expert on it. Yeah, and if you're thinking no love for Depress Telly, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that's been cool. Um, this is our conversational segment. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. for those of you guys, usually, out usually there starts that, off this way. Yeah, and a lot of people are like, I don't like listening to podcasts with just two people that have conversation. So skip the first half hour. That's, well, that's what I said. Or, or, no, I would like to also put forward the one thing we didn't mention already okay. um, is the Kickstarter. Two days left. Now, that's those of you right. who are seeing this later are not going to be able Gil. to see this. Gil Ramirez is a fantastic blacksmith. He uh, has gotten himself some fame on shows like Critical Role, where when people roll, uh, they're rolling his hand-forged metal dice. And the phrase, don't F me, Gil, has come up. <laughs> Um, it, because they don't want to roll a one. So they're they're blaming Gil for all their ones. Uh, so a lot of the dice that he's forged have often had the F word for the replacing one. Mm -hmm. um, or uh, DFMG. Yes, DFMG. Um, <laughs> but anyways, uh, he's got two days left on his Kickstarter to launch his own business of this where he's going to basically uh, rent a space, have the gear, and do this as his career. Yeah, now for um, those of you guys out there, when we say he's a blacksmith, we mean hammer, anvil, yep. like oh, molten yeah. metal. I mean, if we take a look here, yeah, look at that. That is at uh, kickstarter.com, Projects Gil Ramirez, blah, blah, blah. You know, he we'll is, leave a link. He's forged dice out of gold, uh, brass, copper. He, I know he forged one out of a meteorite not that long ago. He, um, I, the, the one that's about to uh, unlock on the on the uh, on, on the, the Kickstarter? Kickstarter is Damascus steel. Jeez, and he hand forges Who every wants single Valerian one of dice? Talk to Gil <laughs> Ramirez. All right, yeah, seriously. And again, he he's got his little thing. Yeah, and again, this is this is a molten molten die mm -hmm. right here. Like he does the whole. Of course, thing. the ad first. Sound. Oh God, no. So anyway, <laughs> but um, I'm not running ads. I'm not running ads for anybody else's thing on top of the thing that uh, people are already. It's just a thing. But for those who also watched the stream of many eyes thing, which Solar and I were very much a part of, uh, Gil was the blacksmith in that town. He yeah. was actually in one of the games as the blacksmith they had to go speak with. Um, and that's Gil. Yeah. And um, again, he's making hand forged and hand ground because I've seen him. Yep. The thing in the grinder. And rah, 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 rah. Yeah, to make dice, because again, we once talked about, um, yeah, we once talked about um, gaming in prison and how those dudes were making their their dice out of um, literal toilet paper, spit, and pencil shavings. You know, so that's hardcore. <laughs> Gil is hardcore. We're we're doing that whole thing. So again, um, check out Gil's Kickstarter. He is already to his stretch goals. We need more because seriously, this is a dude. Damascus and, Steel. Well, Damascus Steel, and he's a person of color. I mean, Ramirez is not a name from Europe. So we've got a person of color working a serious trade, and he's trying to dedicate it to the art of his geekdom. Come on. Come yeah. on. And again, he's an awesome dude. Um, his wife is an awesome lady. Um, his kids, um, one of his daughters was talking about starting a D&D club at, at their school. Nice. So um, back in the deck is actually starting to work with the whole Ramirez family um, with some of the stuff that's going up at our merch store at the beginning of the year. So we've got all that stuff going. So shout out to the Ramirez's yep. and, you know, back. Well Gil's done, Gil. Well yeah, done. Seriously. So, yeah. But I wanted to talk about, um, since we're having table talk, um, we have – two segments uh -huh. today and um the major thing i wanted to talk about is specificality in gaming um in i guess you can say specificality in gaming and in social expectation Ooh. yes just had a thing making sure 
something dropped here, so we'll get the. There we go. There we go. And looks back like up. It looks like everything's still going. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so as I was saying, um, we've talked a lot about gaming protocol, spirit of the spirit of the law versus letter of the law. Um, you know, and and in the spirit of the law, I gotta say, what's going on at MP City? Hey, Deck Mob, how you guys doing? What y'all thought? Y'all thought the we forest forgot? Kelly is dark, and I have promises to keep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, just saying, didn't forget about you guys. But um, we're we're talking specificality because I keep hearing stuff, especially on boards like um like on. All of the many gaming groups that I'm in on Facebook and Reddit and just all over forums and everywhere. Um, one of the things I see a lot is since the rules say don't say that I can't, that means I can. Well, I mean, that's a phrase we used to use all the time with, I mean, the, the, the term came around before the game, but munchkin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the whole point of a munchkin is somebody who does figure out a way to like, well, since it doesn't say that I can't fly with this spell, uh, then I'm flying. Yeah. Well, no, that's not the spirit of the spell. Well, it doesn't say I can't. Yeah, exactly. And um, this actually leads to a really, really dangerous turn of events. And when I say dangerous, I mean it's really dangerous to keeping a social network and – Ooh man, I'm just I'm having a fun. catching everything. Yep, yep, yep. So many wires, so many wires. Oh, my dragon. <laughs> um, it's okay. I shrank him. Um, yeah. When there's um. When there is um. A rule. Okay, there's a hundred ways to interpret, and we've talked about oh, yeah. that. You know, we we go through all that stuff. But there's it's always where the this creation idea. of house rules come from. Yeah, but there's always this idea of the more vague a player or a GM can be, the more that they can get away with stuff. And it's true, but the question is, does speaking in a mercurial, um, obtuse manner um, run a big risk of essentially, I'm not going to say ruining the game, but lessening the fun? You know, um, I can understand if it's a plot point. You know, if you have a carrot, like, as a GM, Especially since we've been running the weekly one shots, we ran one episode and skipped last week, but we're going to be back on on Saturday. Um, it's one of those I have to play these guys giving out missions, and it's like, well, I said you had clearance to enter, but did I say you had clearance to leave? <laughs> and um, one of the things I notice, uh, one of the things I try and run my games with, is practice of practical law okay when you're when you go to court one of the arguments that goes along with most law is if a reasonable person would see it this way <laughs> then it is reasonable you well know? you re do run into the issue of somebody defining what a reasonable person is because a lot of times when i've dealt with people who are interpreting it a certain way if you use the line well reasonable per well i'm a reasonable per per person and i interpret it that way are you being reasonable now? Uh -huh. Are you? Uh -huh. But they'll claim reasonableness, and that makes it difficult. Well, everyone will claim to be reasonable when they're arguing for themselves. That's why I liked the fact that the Munchkin game uh, by Steve Jackson has in the rules mm -hmm. argue about it. And the winner <laughs> is the person who owns the game. <laughs> because to a certain extent with the GM, the GM is the one running the game. They're the final word. And so if they tell you, no, that's not what I believe a reasonable person would, you know, continuing to make your point is just at that point detracting from the game. Yes. Because especially most of the people I know that do that kind of thing are doing it on purpose. And they know that it's not reasonable and they're trying to find a loophole. Yeah, but I, I agree. What I often want to see in those moments – is um, I want to see the GM actually get more uh, justice out of playing that loophole against the person. Um, and it's not necessarily a great way to game. That's, that's my, like, I want to see justice done. So in my head, I want to see the GM 
take whatever that person does and flip it on its head and use the loophole back against them. Now, when you say justice, are you talking like in a death note kind of way or is it one of those, um, well, I know you're exploiting this rule for your own advantage and I will allow you, but I shall do it myself when it suits me. (laughs) No, no, I more so want it to – my hope would be in those moments, why I wish for it, is that it would discourage somebody from doing it. Okay. Uh, My hope would be is if you try to exploit a loophole and the GM goes, okay, and they have in their mind the way they're going to get you back for it, might make you think twice the next time you decide to exploit a loophole. Okay. Um, That's my hope, and I know that isn't always the case. And I know, you know, I've had GMs, uh, uh, min-maxing to me to a certain extent falls into this, where I've seen people that are like, I'm not taking reading and writing. It never comes up. <laughs> and everybody else is like running the thing, and then the GM, we'd come across something to read, and the person would start reading it, and it's like, uh, didn't you take that you can't read or write? And I've had GMs go, well, I don't really feel like enforcing that. Well, then why did I spend a point in it? <laughs> okay. You know, so I want that to the justice I want in that moment is for that guy to not be able to read and write this thing. Okay, no, that's fair. That's really fair. And but it, but to a certain extent, I get very very like uh, I have strong feelings about it, and that can to a certain extent detract from the game. So I also have to keep myself in check of wanting justice over. I still want the game to be fun. Okay, no, I'm I'm definitely there with you. Um. One of the things that, like, as a GM, when I'm talking about the spirit of the law and all that jazz, I'm kind of stuck going, all right, what is best for the overall – What what's best for the overall fun of the game? Yeah. That's where I sit down. Um, I see a lot of videos. I watch a lot of videos. So do I. <laughs> and um, – one of the things that I saw was, it's not the GM's responsibility to make sure you have fun. And I'm like, then um, whose is it? You know, that that's the question. It, it's like, who it, whose job is it? Um, I, would, I would go on that, though, that I don't think it's solely the GM's responsibility for you to have fun. That's fair. But I do believe that it is a joint gathering to create a game. The GM is playing their part. The players are also playing theirs. So it becomes everybody's responsibility to help everybody else have fun. Okay. All right. That's, that's what makes it a social, you know, game. Ah, social. Who <laughs> needs friends? Uh, socialism and gaming. <laughs> yeah, who needs friends? <laughs> um, now, when it, comes to, um, when it comes to those group sessions, um, I find that this is one of the things that comes up. This is I, I talked with the Dudleys about expectation gaming because I noticed that this comes up a lot when it comes to new games because there is mm. there is a hard hard balance when you invite some friends over to play a new game that you just bought but and and you video gamers out there you guys know this where it's a group game like way back in the day there was these games called Guitar Hero. But you had to be good at the game before you got to all the songs that they advertised in the commercials. But by the time you unlock those games or uh, those songs, you are now the best player, and it is unfun to play with you. So do you? Although I I like when they. I mean that game also opened up uh, multiplayer. So when you have one person's on drums, one person's on vocals, one person's on. So when you have that person who's awesome at guitar. They can select a harder level, and then it's fun because you're all making the song happen. Yeah, I mean, there there is a very big aspect on that. Um, but what I'm talking about is when one person excels far beyond anything, yes, yes. they start to get the expectation thrust upon them that they – they're pretty much looked at like, well, this is your game. You wrote it. You know it in and out. So you can't make any mistakes. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, see? See? Yeah. That head throwback. You know exactly what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. And it happens even when it's not a, a role playing game. It happens in board games. Oh. If you're introducing somebody to a new one, and it oh my gosh, how dare more you be often than wrong not. on a rule? Yeah. Um, it happens in board game. Uh, it happens in board game quite a bit. So I was thinking, like, you know, um, over here at the Wizards Tower, we get board games in bulk. We don't just go, hey, there's a board game out there. Let's go get it. We get, like, five. 
So we're like, aha, woohoo, yeah, got my check, got my check, yeah, all right, cool. So we're going to need these eight games. Um, but then when we have people over to play it, it's like now everybody's on that same learning curve. And then you got some people that just want to play a game, some people that expect you to tell them what to do, some people that just want to get drunk and distract because it's their time to have attention. Um, and that's where it comes down to, well, the rules don't say it like that. And I'm like, well, we don't quite know the rules. Like, I found in Magic the Gathering a lot, um, people would only read the first two sentences of, an, of the game text on a card. <laughs> so it's like, it says counter target spell! Well, yeah, if that spell has red mana and black mana. This is a blue and white deck. Sorry. <laughs> There's no red in here. Um, but yeah, um, so what I'm seeing is um, what, what I tend to see, especially this time of year, because everybody's doing their stuff, is how, as a community, do we target the learning curve? Like, I just got this new game. Let's let's do it. Now, I know in L.A. County, at least my the southern part of L.A. County, over here where the Wizards Tower is, at least in this dimension, um, people don't like learning, learning new stuff. It, it's real hard to find people to go, like, we got this game, um, I forgot who it was from, but it's a card game based on Batman the Animated Series called Almost Got It. And, okay. um, yeah, from the episode Almost Got It. How was the game played? Not a clue. <laughs> Not a clue. It's still pristine in its wrapper because people come over and, uh, and it's like, hey, you know, you want to play a game? And it's like, yeah, well, we've got this game for Batman the Animated Series, and you're like, yeah, um, I'm from the suburbs, so I don't want to say no because it'll make you feel bad, so I'm just going to waver back and forth and be real nonspecific until it's time for me to go home. Hopefully you'll get the hint. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about, and for that reason, especially since I like trying out a whole bunch of new games, and you know, for, for merely playing, I'm always posting new games. I've just tried Terraforming Mars, which apparently everybody has played, and I keep <laughs> reading how wonderful the game is, so I finally played it, and it's the next uh, Merely Playing that I'm going to post. Okay. But um, I played it with one person who knew the game, mm -hmm. and four of us who did not. And so, and there were even things that the person who knew the game was like, oh, I've been doing that wrong. We're like, okay, well, we're going to give you it that way for the rest of the game. But there was one rule that was like, I was like, uh, I'm going to say that we're not going to, you know, we can't retro this, but we can't keep this rule going because it's going to make certain things ridiculously easy that aren't supposed to be that easy. Um, so, but we spent the first uh, hour creating, so he found on Etsy these uh, clear um, acrylic uh, markers okay. for the game that hold the cubes in place and everything. So we put those together. So it was arts and craft for the first hour and a half of the game day. And then the game took five hours because we didn't know all the rules. We're checking up things. We're looking it up. And because of that, I often feel that if you've got a game that you've never played before or, you know, you need to find that group of people who are interested in learning a new game. Right. Because there are those that are not. In that case, play something everybody knows. But you, there are people out there. As a matter of fact, uh, we've been trying to put together a Time Stories game. And I was going to ask you what you're doing between uh, Christmas and New Year's because my friend Dave wants to put together a uh, Time Stories game. We need uh, two more people. But we've been trying to put this together for a while because it's just him and I, and we want to bring in more people. But not everybody knows how to play, and that's a complicated game to jump into. Um, well, honestly, between Christmas and New Year's or between this Tuesday and next Tuesday, mm -hmm. I don't know. I really don't know. Um what's going on between now and then because um let's see we're running a nominee the day before new year's eve the new year's i'm eve trying to be there I'm um, trying to be oh there. i know again you are you're my dude without a body <laughs> and i can always skype you that ain't a problem <laughs> um but that being said um one of the major things that are happening is like christmas I have to prep for that game. I may have to prep for the game one shots. Yep. And um, I, I don't know if I was talking to Doug or not or talking about this off screen, but you 
guys have your thing. You guys love your Halloween. Oh my God, my Halloween! I get to put on my costume. Right? Yes, absolutely. I love Halloween. Yeah. Um, I feel the same about New Year's Eve. Okay. Partly because it's when the grown-ups come out, and I don't have to share my nights with kids. Um, <laughs> no, hang on. I love children. Everyone who knows me knows that I adore kids. I love, I love games, and I love all that other stuff. The thing is, every grown-up needs a brunch. And there are two days of the year that are not co-opted by children. Okay, because let's face it. Well, there, there's Mother's Day. If you are a mother, <laughs> you have a child. <laughs> yeah. So that's your one day where you're supposed where your kids are supposed to do something nice and you can't tell them that it sucks because they haven't taken 12 years of art class. So you have to be nice on them on your day if you're a mom. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Okay. Not at all. If you're a dad, how many ties does one neck need? You know? So the days that are supposed to be for grown-ups not there. Every other day of the year is for children. You're working to feed them. You're working to house them. You're working to buy their toys. You're trying to guide them through a very complicated, very, very complicated um, social structure involving their peers and their school and what they need. So most of your life is dedicated to kids. And then the holidays come up. Easter. Is it about celebrating the resurrection of the Christian Lord and Savior? No, it's about taking your kids to go find a bunch of toys that are filled with candy. <laughs> okay, it, it, am, again, am I wrong? No, not wrong <laughs> you know? at all. So, you get two holidays. Two holidays throughout the entire year. And again, well, what about Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is about going to a relative's house that you probably don't like and feeding your kid and their kids. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will put forward that I, I'm not sure I buy into the Thanksgiving one solely because I've my family for too many years has always had the kids table. It is the separation of kids and the kids kind of become a Lord of the Flies aspect over there because the adults are going to have adult conversation for once in their lives. Uh, the adults are going to try and have adult conversation and by the third shot in they're going, Billy, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Who are you? No, no, get off of the China cabinet. You know, that's that's what they're uh, doing. See, my, my family, Billy, oh. climbed the China cabinet and uh, has planted a flag at the top Mm -hmm. and is kicking anybody that tries to climb up it while everybody else is like, go for it, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But again, Billy's still there. <laughs> you have to worry if Billy falls off that china cabinet, then you're going to spend the rest of... you worry that the day after. That's why it's Black and Blue Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think I might have liked growing up in your house a little more. Um, but, yeah, but, you know, so the only holidays that you get as an adult is Valentine's Day, yeah. which is only good for half the population, and even then, maybe. Sorry, ladies, Valentine's Day sucks for us. It sucks terribly. It's horrible. <laughs> because you have a 0.00219% chance of getting it right. <laughs> Everything else is for children. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've lucked into not celebrating that one. Yeah. I, I specifically opted out. I was very clear with my wife when we first got together that I don't celebrate Valentine's Day. I will give her the rest of the week. Okay. You know, actually, we celebrate St. Justin's Day. Which is when? Um, it's actually March 15th. It's the 8th of March. Ah. Yeah. So, so uh, we'll celebrate March 14th, which is both Pi Day and uh, another holiday that you guys may want to look up online and yeah, see Saint, what that holiday is. St. Justin's. No, that's the 15th. <laughs> yeah, no. The 14th is another holiday. Uh, um, Directly a month after Valentine's Day. See, we had it a month and a day. That's okay. why it's not on the calendar yet, but we're talking okay. about exactly the same thing. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know, February 14th is for her. March 15th is for me. And let's face it, I'm a feminine one in my relationship. So. <laughs> but still, but still. So, really, that's a tough one. You know, that's a really tough one. So outside of that, you get New Year's Eve. And it's not even a whole holiday. It doesn't start until after bedtime. <laughs> it's kids, go to bed. Don't ask what the fishbowl full of car keys is for. Go to bed. <laughs> you know what? I'll wake you up at midnight, let you take a shot. Happy New Year. Go to bed. <laughs> you know, and that's my favorite time to, like, go to Las Vegas or just go out where grown-ups are. Um, and I get the gambit of grown-ups. I get the, 
I get the freshly fledged ones, like the ones that are in college that are we call amateurs on um on St. Patrick's Day mm-hmm. and Cinco de Mayo and every other day that involves drinking. And um and then I get the people like me that are just like, Oh yeah. What happened? Put the kids to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we put the kids to bed. Happy New Year. Yeah, I know, because the rest of the year has not been that great. No, it has not. So let's let's go out. Let's get into some fights. Let's light some fireworks. Let's join a couple of parties. Let's do board games until dawn. Let's just make a mess and be loud. It's our turn. <laughs> the irony is that none of my friends feel the same way. <laughs> so I do it on my own. <laughs> I think you're just not looking in the right places. Yeah, that, I know those. That's exactly I know it. those days. Yeah. And and the other thing is, you'd mentioned you know going to Vegas is one of your options. And I gotta tell you, I'm pretty sure Halloween is not a kid's holiday in Vegas. <laughs> I'm it pretty is. sure no, that unless you're going to Circus Circus. Well, no, it's <laughs> it is not a kid's holiday on the Strip. Well, Everywhere or else. in uh, uh, is it WeHo that has the big Halloween party that is not really for kids? Yeah, you know. So there are places. It's the thing is, is I think you're you're going to the wrong places, dude. <laughs> I'm either in the tower or in the suburbs. Yeah, in fair the enough. Suburbs Halloween is for college dudes to dress like college girls and college girls to dress like hookers. <laughs> so, <Fucking point. laughs> so yeah. So I'm like, you know what? You guys do that whole thing. Yeah, woo it up. All right. Now I'm I'm going to where the grown ups are, because uh, again I used to love Halloween. I used to love it. Um, I really did. I like the creativity. That's why again shout out to cosplayers. You guys, your every day is what Halloween was when I was a kid, and when I was a teenager, and when I was in college. And I'm like, that's what I'm hoping for. And now it's just like, how close to naked can you get? Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Creative. Yeah. Stiletto heels that you got from a goodwill. Oh, look, a corset. Oh, no, you're just wearing a bra. What a creative costume. Oh, look, you're wearing your girlfriend's skirt, and you're not even doing makeup. I mean, really? Really? You know, that's just that's just my thing now. Um, but again, New Year's, I want to do something cool for New Year's, but I might be swamped again. So if I'm prepping for game gallery and all that stuff, or prepping for game gallery, prepping for weekly one-shots, um, that's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. So we'll see what's up. We'll see what's up. And New Year's Day is the day I take care of my mom. Isn't that fun? So, you know, that weekend, I'd really like to go to Las Vegas. But we're running a nominee on the 30th, so I have to prep for that as well. So we'll see how that goes. (laughs) (laughs) You know. But again, I will have my my night of woo. My night of of woo. I'm going to do something. Oh, you have woo-hoo. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Not woo woo as in like woo. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> no, that's every day. <laughs> every day. Says the man who's wise enough to put the timer on his dad's side. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so um, but yeah, so we were talking about specificality. Um, Absolutely. So it's the understanding of what people are there for. And you're right when it comes to finding a group of friends that's up for long on New Year's. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a tough one. That's one of the reasons that we started the website and really – like, you know, get on Deckers on the book and say, hey, we we like learning new games. <laughs> um, and we've, um, you know, one of the resources that I definitely wanted to talk about with people who have this problem is us, um, the local gaming stores. Because mm-hmm. local gaming stores are really good platforms. Especially several of them, uh, Game Empire and, and uh, in Pasadena and yeah, and the several other stores. Yeah, Bellflower. Guildhouse, uh, they, but they're... Um, they have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of days where they'll bring in a representative. Like I used to, or I, mm-hmm. I guess I still am for Steve Jackson Games. I only do really conventions now, but Steve Jackson Games and, and Slugfest, where we'll uh, walk you through how the game is played, so that yep. everybody that sits down, and and most of the people who run those things will either play or bow out based on what the people are looking for. So if they're looking for somebody to be in the game to help kind of regulate and keep things even, mm-hmm. there are times I'll jump in to make sure the guy who wants to kill everybody doesn't get a chance to because I'm going to keep him in check. Right. Or there's the time that everybody just wants to play because they all know each other. Great. I'm going to bow out. You guys got this. I'm here to answer any questions for you. We call those guys high monitors. <laughs> you know. But, well, you do both. You mm-hmm. do both. Um, and I don't know how often the hall monitor gets in the fight. <laughs> right. Now is the time for running, you know, kind of thing. Um 
Now, one of the things that is, um, again, another thing that I wanted to talk about in regards to game, um, in regards to table stuff, was um, when, I mean, you brought up the whole idea of justice, because um, there, mes- there are a few, not messages, but videos about the, not power gamers, but the rules lawyers. Yep. And I want to differentiate, when I say lawyer, I mean lawyer, which means they know the rules, but they're trying to spin the rules to the advantage of their client, <laughs> meaning themselves. <laughs> um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that was, um, um, there was another, another YouTube channel that I love, I want to talk to him, I'm hoping to spend some time with him at Kingdom Con this year, um, talked about his monk that was like, oh, no, 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 it says very clearly here that when this happens, I get an opportunity, an attack of opportunity. Yeah, but your hands are tied up. Ah, uh, but still, I get an attack of opportunity. Okay, fine. And then he tried to use it for the bad guy, and the bad guy tried to take that same attack of opportunity. No, but his hands are tied up. <laughs> you know? And, um, yep, 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 exactly. Sh- shake your <sighs> head with judgment. Shake your head. Shake it. Shake it. Um, but, yeah, and there's a lot of this stuff going on. And what I always want to put out there, and I really want to keep pushing this, is when you're playing games, is your ultimate objective to win or to have fun? And stop it, trolls. I can already hear you already. But winning is fun. For everybody? You know? It's interesting. There's a meme going around right now that's using uh, Black Panther in Wakanda. <laughs> and it says, uh, when somebody at, at the LARP says they're here to win, mm-hmm. uh, we don't do that here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. LARP, LARP is to keep the story going. You want to keep your character alive and further your character, but you also want the story to keep going. Because if you win, the LARP is over. Yeah. Or at, te- least, or at least your character's out because well, you won. No, technically, I won Promethean. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. But I still played that character for a while because I found more story. I didn't want – like the win was a fun thing, but it was literally a blip in that character's arc, and it was a lot more fun afterwards because now I'm hiding the fact that I turned human. Yeah. Because it was it was a weird thing where my character knew he turned human. Prometheans are created who have a stolen spirit, but their goal is to become a uh, uh, their own spirit. Just think Pinocchio. Yes, and uh, usually to do it, you have to create another. So you passed the curse on, and something happened in a game mechanic that was not was how it was supposed to work. It was an auction yeah. lot um, where it stripped you of your template, and so stripping a Promethean of his template and turning him human. Technically, he wins. Yeah. It's, I'm <laughs> and, a real boy now. <laughs> but I didn't create a new one. I just became human. And so now I know I was a created. I know that other creatives want to know how I did this. And I'm no longer indestructible. So if they come over <laughs> and start pulling on me to find out how I did it, I will come apart and die. <laughs> so it was – I, like, hid the fact that I won. And I hid from other creatives. And like, it was it was a more interesting storyline, the after winning, than the winning. The winning was a fun story, but it was one step in the whole thing. Right. And um, that's that is – Again, that is a great example of you were planning to have fun. Um, Again, I don't think I've won a board game in the past three years. Mm. Now, I'm normally teaching a board game, and it's really bad. Excuse me. Oh, God, I'm all all gassy. It's really bad form to um, win the game as you're teaching it. Really bad form because essentially you're beating up on someone while you're teaching them the rules. And that's not really – that's not how I roll. Um, that's not what I enjoy when I'm winning a game because I don't have a full understanding of the rules. And now I've lost. Why am I losing? Oh, because you're using tactics. Well, I'm still trying to understand paragraph four. You know, so that's that's one of the things that kind of makes it unfair. Um, so <clears throat> when I teach, I kick down my play style a notch. And, of course, I allow a lot of take backs and all that stuff. But I also recognize that sometimes the new people don't even know that now is the time to ask a question. And a lot of them do know that now is the time to ask a question, but they don't know what question to ask. You know, so if they're already afraid 
that they are going to look stupid or um, they're going to lose because the point of, of playing the game is winning, then they're not having fun. They're not having fun. And, you know, I, I always have to um, examine. I have to examine how to navigate that particular thing. And you've seen, I've asked people all over the world, like, how do I navigate that? How do I navigate this? You know, but when it comes to um, specificality, it's hard to be super specific when you don't know what the other players don't know. You know, when you don't know that they're understanding what you're saying. You know, I guess all of this comes down to communication. Well, and, and in that same vein, sometimes they'll tell you they understand, and so you have to take them at their word, and then you find out later that they didn't understand. Oh. And so then you have to kind of re-explain, like, okay, well, do you want to go back those steps? And I, like you said, I'm when I'm teaching a game, I'm more than willing for take backs. I'm more than willing for I, I try and explain the tactics as we play. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, I also I don't particularly want somebody to take it easy on me when I'm learning a game. And so this may be me. So I don't necessarily kick down my play style, but I will point out what tactic I'm using and I will point out when they can use whatever tactic would work for them. Because I, I definitely believe in, uh, in sharing those tactics. It's one of the reasons merely playing uh, began was an ability to say, hey, if you want to play this game, this is a fun game. By the way, really pay attention to these cards because <laughs> they're the valuable ones. Guillotine, if you're not going after the palace guards, you're not really aware of what the fact that the other person is. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's an important thing to know even in the first time you play it. Okay. And so having those little tactics before you even start playing, I usually will try and talk about those when I'm bringing the cards out or showing somebody how to play a game. Like, these are the ones you want to watch for because this is why they're awesome. This is what you want to do here because if you manage to do this, you shoot the moon and you win. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. And I'm glad you used the term shoot the moon. Not not many people play hearts and moons. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Because I haven't played it in ages in the real world. I play it on my phone. <laughs> or phone. So many phone apps of playing hearts and, yeah, shooting the moon's easier yeah. on it. So it's it's definitely one of those things that's out there. Um, so outside of that, um, we've been doing new segments on the shows, Left, Right, and Sideways. And um, on the game gallery, mm -hmm. Um, we've been going over story time. Okay. Story time. We covered but and therefore. And um, we also covered subject, verb, object, and then how they how they intertwine are um, subject, verb, object plus resistance equals drama, and subject, verb, object plus subvert subversion of narrative plus pain equals comedy. So, and we're doing this for the idea of dreaming it. Okay. Digging it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's some good stuff. Um, so I wanted to take this last part of the show to talk about things um, from that same kind of intellectual point of view to talk about what it takes to be a good player or more to the point to be a better parent. This is why I'm talking. This is the overall sense of why we're talking about specificality expectation management, um, spirit of the rules versus the letter of the law, you know? And as far as being a good player, what does that mean? What does being a good player mean? Does it mean being good at the game? Partly. But much like with everything in life, in the living thing, there are many, many ways to continue to expand your network, your your influence, just your club of friends. Okay, you can be hyper competent. You can be easy to work with. You can be enjoyable. <laughs> you know, um, I like the idea of being qualified for hyper competence, but I also really want to be a pleasure to be around. That's where I choose. That that's that's where I plant my flag. I like to be a player that's fun to have in a game. Now. I accomplish this by being talky talky McTalk talk talk, you know, um, <laughs> you know. So <coughs> I make characters, and we try and talk our way out of fights, you know. 
We we don't exactly try and make friends, but it's look, make a mistake, confuse the enemy. Run, guys, make a mistake, confuse the enemy. It's like, dude, you're the tank. You should be fighting. Don't tell me what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> okay, sure, I'm an eighth level ogre barbarian, but I want to dance, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but that's where flaws come in. Flaws <laughs> are so much fun for stuff like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I actually wrote up recently uh, the, the specs because I thought I was going to play in a game and the game ended up not happening. But if it happens, uh, I've got a uh, pacifist paladin that I put together that is purely about you will not attack anybody standing on my side. Okay. I will block anything you do. <laughs> All of my actions are I will protect everyone behind me. And it brings it brought into something. I, I am a pacifist, and one of the things that I've often had to – uh, discuss about pacifism is uh, because I don't like it doesn't mean I won't <laughs> defend myself. Like, and that's the thing is like the, the this character is I'm gonna try everything I can to not use the blade. If I have to, I have to. But, but I'm gonna do everything I can. Sometimes a warrior has to fight. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But um. Uh. I don't know. Where, I don't remember where I was going with that. Uh, in train derailed. Uh, <laughs> you were ta- you were talking about where flaws come in. Right? Oh yeah, it, it just makes it more interesting uh, when when playing something that uh, goes against the even flow of your character. That can be a internal struggle. Um, it, it makes for more interesting gameplay for me. I, I can't speak for other players, but it also makes it more interesting for me when I'm playing with somebody who's going through that internal struggle. And watching okay. them, and I have to be aware of what's going to trigger them. And I have to – the flaws are a beautiful thing for gameplay, in my opinion, in role-playing games specifically. Okay. Um, well, one of the things that I use when it comes to talking with talky talks mm-hmm. um, is, yeah, I – one, when I hear role-playing games, and you and I talk about this all the time, actor to actor, it's, you know, yes, we are playing a role. Yes, we are role-playing. And this shall be my role. I shall be the sociopath. Uh, yes, I shall be the sociopath who's dressed as a court jester covered in bells. It shall be my, this, this will be my exercise. How can I do this without being Robin Williams? You know, I mean, kind of thing. And, um, oh, <laughs> oh, no, really. <laughs> I'm just going to go on a whole bunch of non sequiturs and then grab myself in various places. Oh, <laughs> places. Oh, you know, no, um, you know, um, but when it comes down to playing these characters, doing these things, um, hitting these microphones, um, when we are at the table, as far as being a player goes, the one thing I have to say is there is no one way to do it. And that is where, that is the biggest sand trap I see with, especially new players. <coughs> um, we live in a golden age of gaming right now. Mm-hmm. And we really do. Amazing time for tabletop gaming as well. And a lot of people go to tabletop from video games with a mindset of efficiency, um, which is an interesting way to take it. Um, I see a lot of videos on how to play this character class, as in what spells to take so that you get the whole thing, or the most useful thing in this game, and the most useless thing in... You know, the most useless thing for this character class. The most useful thing for this character class. And I get it. I definitely understand it. Um, I was there when WoW launched. <laughs> I was there when Diablo launched, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. I played I played most of the Final Fantasies until the PlayStation 2? No, the PlayStation 1 came out. So all the Final Fantasies up to 7, including Secret of Mana. Shout out. Um, but... And Tom Bauer, who's the voice on the main character yeah. on Secret of Mana now? B- b- exactly, you know. Um, but one of the things that I've noticed is in video games, it's numbers after numbers after numbers after numbers after numbers. Um, and I talked about this on a different show, but I was expanding with you. Mm-hmm. Um, where it's numbers after numbers because there's only so much space on a computer. So you don't really get that much chance for improvisation because programmers can't write that much in. Well, you know? I noticed this. Uh, so I was a big fan. I still am a big fan of the Star Wars MMO. Okay. Um, and one of the things I liked that a lot of the MMOs didn't have was you, in conversations you got to choose your response. Right. And they would react differently. 
However, they didn't have the ability for that to reflect on the next conversation. Mm. So no matter how you dealt with this person in this conversation, nine times out of ten, like they had one or two things that would be slightly different. But most of the things are exactly the same regardless. Whereas I wanted, like if I piss this guy off, great, he doesn't offer me any more quests. If you made him happy, he'll offer you more quests. If you didn't, he won't offer you any more. But the guy across the room who hates him now will offer <laughs> you quests if you piss this guy off. Okay. So, like, but that is such a programming chain, a programming web that is going to be so impossible for the programmers and the size of the game file and all of that that it's just not feasible. And that's what tabletop allows. Correct. Correct. Very much so. And, um, so when it comes down to playing with the game, um, I want to give a few <coughs> concepts, not tips, not how-tos, not follow these directions and you will. That's not how wizards work, dude. <laughs> All right? I want to give some concepts on how to be a better person at the table, not on how, how to be a better runner of the game. Um, yes. Oh, you're nope, yawning. I was yawning. Okay. <laughs> um, so one of the major concepts I always, always, always have to throw out to new players is this. Your FOMO isn't real. Your GM is going to get to you. You're going to get your turn. So relax. Listen. See what's going on because I know this from um, miniatures world to world. I am the most C+. Plus miniature war gamer you can ever play with because I can see what my next five moves are going to be but I suck at ending so when it's my turn I go here 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 it's you and then when you're doing the reaction you're going well should I hmm, I hmm, I, I think 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 plan strategize but my brain is just like Okay, I've already gone that far. Oh, wow, I didn't see that much. Well, he totally just won this game. Good game, and I walk away. <laughs> and people are like, that's so annoying. I'm like, why? Because you've already taken out every single key to my team. So, you know, good game. Let's start over. Let's see if either one of us learned something. Isn't that fun? Um, but I do that primarily because I know I'm going to get my turn. Um, and what I had to learn to do was to engage with the other player. And at the tabletop, so many people, especially <coughs> nowadays because everything is fighting for our attention, um, they cut off other players, they try and monopolize um, game play time, and it's, guys, relax, we're here to have fun. You're not trying to get the attention of your parents as a baby because you'll disappear. I'm not implying that you're babies, okay? I'm not implying that. What I'm saying is, as excited as you are, everyone else at the table may be just as excited. So let them have their turn. Yes. Um, I, I just, I've often compared LARP specifically, tabletop to an extent as well, but I've often compared LARP as an actor to an improv exercise. It's a giant improv game. Yes, and? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it, it's interesting because one of the things that I've had trouble with some improv uh, that I've gotten involved in, I've gotten involved in ones where the person wants to win at improv. Mm. And it, so that's why I find it very, very t uh, relatable to this topic in that improv, the point is the audience's entertainment, not my joke getting to be the one that's told. So if I have this great joke in my head or this thing that I want to do or I'm ready to go with this story and the person in front of me goes a completely different direction, I need to be able to go, yep, we're going to back your play <laughs> yeah. because that's, that's going to be more entertaining to the audience than me trying to force this idea I had mm -hmm. because I'm sure mine's better and I'm going to force it. And now the people are watching two egos fight right. and that's not entertaining to the audience right and that's um i how can i put it i love your idea but i'm not gonna argue what i'm gonna say is i go for engagement over entertainment because you know the improv thing is a really good thing to talk about in relation to these things but i don't like using the word improv Person. because that 
cursed, cursed show that made millions of dollars off of an improv 101 exercise. Um, whose line is it anyway? anyway. Um, you know, um, they redefined improv um, to where most people believe that improv automatically means comedy. And True. that hurts my, that hurts my soul. True. Because um don't get me wrong, I love comedy. I love laughing. But um my most favorite ex was telling me about when she was in improv in Australia and she always improv for the genre. So it was like she did all this stuff and they were like improving at a party and they were doing all that other stuff and they were telling party stories and then she looked over and said and everybody woke up except me. And next thing you know, they're now improving in an afterlife. And I'm like, yes, take it to that direction. They're trying to be like, look, I'm so cool. And she's like, no, we're telling a story. And um, But that's that's the why I say entertainment, not mm-hmm. amused. Oh, okay. So amused is one form so of entertainment. Drama <laughs> is also another form of entertainment. Yes. So you can go any direction. And entertain. And the thing is, the, the reason why I make the comparison is where improv, you have the people on stage and you have an audience there. Mm-hmm. Tabletop, you have people who are improving, and we are also the audience. It's so true. So yeah. it, it's everybody. You do put one person kind of in charge to kind of keep the narrative going a certain direction. They're whoever in an improv thing is, is like deciding what the game is, deciding what the suggestions are, like that. And then you go, and they kind of keep everybody in line. That's your GM. Mm-hmm. But uh, especially in the in the live action stuff, and um, you you get a lot more long form in that <laughs> you need this story to keep going. Mm-hmm. If you run out of story, well, I guess I'll go home and turn in my character sheet, and I'm done for the night. Thanks. Yeah. But the more you're able to be like, oh, it's really interesting. Let me explore this. This is going to be really. Oh, oh, you did that. Oh <laughs> my, the, you just pissed off my character so bad, and it's exciting because. That drama is there. I mean, yeah. one of my dear friends in in the uh, in the world of darkness, LARP, got, like was insulting my character, and we were at just in each other's faces. And as soon as game was over, we we're like, "That was so much fun," because <laughs> <laughs> both of us knew the other one would be okay with where we took that. Right. So, um, so I guess like the too long didn't read version of this is understand that as a player. Yes, your responsibility is to play, but you're also a human being around other human beings. Mm-hmm. So, excuse me. So, most of the time, the wish to win, <coughs> the wish to get the attention, is based on fear of irrelevance um, and fear of embarrassment. And, <coughs> and you know, go ahead, fight me on that. But people want to know that they matter. And people want to know that they matter as more than the butt of a joke. And um, so people, in their nervousness, tend to overcompensate. I know I do it all the time, you know, especially like when I'm trying to impress my girlfriend. I'm just like, well, I stuck my foot in my mouth now. You know, that's the whole thing. Should have seen me when I was single. You know, it was like, hey, you're pretty, and I think, okay, I'm going to go now. Um, Because I was, you know, afraid of embarrassment. I was afraid of irrelevance. I was afraid that she wouldn't like me. Um, or I was afraid that I was going to be judged as lacking, you know, and that's a real and relevant fear, especially in the 21st century. But the thing is, if you're playing the game, you matter. Your voice matters, and your GM knows that your voice matters, so they will make time for your voice. Just you. Absolutely, and and on that note, um, Noting that in social circles this also happens. As you're, you're pointing out in dating, it happens just also with friends. Everybody wants to be the one to drop the funny quip mm-hmm. or the one to bring up the interesting story or the one to be the center of conversation all the time. Ooh. Everybody has that desire every once in a while, uh, although I will say some introverts probably avoid that feeling, but there's still uh, – I, I, I mean, my introverted moments, sometimes I'm like, God, I, I feel bad that I'm not trying to be or I, that I don't have the thing that's going to make me the center of the conversation, um, you know, that, sci- that psychological thing going on. But the reason I wanted to bring that up is uh, there are those people, and I have the utmost respect for them, I refer to them as joke snipers. Joke snipers? People who the whole conversation 
will say absolutely nothing. They sit there, they listen to everybody, and then in one moment of silence, they say one one-liner that has everybody else on the floor, and then they go back to their silence. Oh. They wait, they time that shot, and they say that comment. Oh, and God. everybody else is in floors, and then they just go back to it. They're more than happy to let everybody run, and they're biding their time for that moment. They can get their little bit in there, and then they go back to letting everybody else have the floor. I blame Buffy because that was Cordelia. So, uh. <laughs> yeah. So, again, um, I want to thank you for showing up today, man. No problem. Seriously, that – you above and beyond as always um whenever you can make it down because believe it or not ladies and gentlemen this dude this guy this guy this guy lives about oh god an hour and a half yeah 90 minutes away from the wizard's tower yep or at least from the nearest portal to the wizard's tower because the entire region that he's in is warded to my magics well, um, and, then, and then the other the other aspect of it is we originally when we were doing this we were talking about possibly doing some night things mm-hmm. and with the baby that's just not an option. Yeah, no, I, life I got in the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah life so really got in the way. It's it's got to be when and I can make it. And yeah. these daytime things, I appreciate. I know you're not huge for the morning. I'm just getting no sleep, so it's really a lot easier to be awake in the morning if you just don't get sleep. You, they don't want to see me <laughs> that sleep deprived. Y'all don't. <laughs> But yeah, but thank you for showing up. Absolutely. And of course, I want to thank our good friends over in NP City. You know, thank you, Deck Mob. Vixen has been busy today. <laughs> Look at that. Um, and of course, you know, I want to thank you guys for showing up. We're always trying to end the show on something thoughtful because, you know, we're thinkers and all that stuff. But I am going to say that we've got a lot of stuff coming down. Now, um, it, it's weird. I realized not too long ago that um, that Tuesdays have kind of been my Fridays, or um, Mondays have been my Fridays. So my days off are normally Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. So I like having a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday schedule. Um, but it's weird because I don't have days off from anybody else that I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so happy Monday to you guys out there. But um, if you guys like the stuff that we were talking about, then please, 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 please um, subscribe to us on this, um, you know, subscribe to us on Twitch and all that stuff. You know, get your Amazon thing. Um, subscribe to us because Amazon gives away free memberships. Just check the back end. Put our name on in the Twitch thing. That helps us out. Of course, become a patron because that would be really awesome. Help us keep the lights on and all that stuff. We've got three now, and that's not bad for two days. You know, um, so that's that's really a thing. Um, and of course, if you want to help us directly and quickly, you can always hit us up on the GoFundMe, and that would be cool. Um, and of course, if you guys really, 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 really want to help us out here, um, well, I've got things. I've got so many notes. I'm just checking. There we are. Yeah, I'm checking to see on the ways that you guys can help us out. <laughs> um, and, of course, you can help us out by heading over to lovebackinthedeck at gmail.com. You can also, <coughs> um, you know, check out the archive over on YouTube, like, subscribe, and all that stuff. I'm not monetized over there. Um, we had a talk with the company, and YouTube's algorithm is just weird. But join us over on Deckers on the Book, see what we're making, see what we're filming, see the fun people that are gamers just like you or comic fans just like you or other people of color and LBG, uh, LGBT people who have your common interests. Like we're trying to like make friends and all that stuff. Um, and of course, if you're a lot like us spending 90 minutes in traffic just <laughs> to get down here, then don't watch, listen over on SoundCloud at SoundCloud slash good poo. Um, hit up the Instagram. Um, Instagram is at back in the deck and you'll get most of our announcements and all that jazz. So I really want to thank you guys for showing up today and we're still working stuff out. We plan on making 2019 over with some serious forward progress. But for those of you guys that have stuck with us, a special, special solstice, Christmas, Festivus, um, um, Chris Mahana Quantica, um, <laughs> to you guys and thank you and next year we're going to try and go a little bit like at least three inches further than we did this year every year's a stretch every year's a stretch 
Um, I just wanted to uh, say also, feel free to uh, hit me up on uh, Twitter uh, at DW, uh, or sorry, Bardic underscore DW, or hit me up on uh, Instagram. As a matter of fact, if you like what I was talking about with the strategy tips, uh, merely playing is every third of my Instagram posts. Mm -hmm. So if you look down my page, there's one column that is all merely playing uh, different games. Let me know if you like th those, and if you find them helpful, please let me know because I may take it to a point of doing some sort of podcast or something with it. Well, you know. To, uh, right now, it's just the photo shoots. Yeah, and as it is, he also shares them on the Deckers on the Book, yep. so go ahead and check out all that other stuff because we are a community and we're doing the whole big thing. <laughs> Yay! Um, again, I'm not very much of a morning person, but – just remember, if anybody tells you that you can't have the hobbies you like because you're too weird or the circumstances of your birth, you know, regardless of what circumstances those are, meaning race, religion, creed, um, sexual orientation, gender identity, um, hell, your disabilities, your budget, even if it's a low budget or really high budget, and it's just not a part of your social class, then you just tell those people that we said to take those cards and put them back, back in, in the deck. deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, along with D.W. McCann, the Bard in the Deck. And thank you guys for joining us today on Tabletop.